This tutorial shows how to load an Excel spreadsheet into a MySQL table using Clover ETL. Start by creating a graph which is like a job or a process in Clover ETL terms. Next create a MySQL database connection. The graph uses two pieces of metadata, the source Excel files metadata, which comes from a file called context.xls, it's in the data in folder, I put it there before the demo. It reads off the file uh, column headers from the file and uses those as the metadata. There's one correction I need to apply, uh, zip comes in as numeric, but I'd rather that be a string and I also need to clear out the number format. Next step is to create the metadata for the target MySQL table. It uses the connection created in the earlier step. And I select the table called Legacy Contact. And since I want to work with all the fields, I generate it and take the default uh, select statement that's provided as a select star. And that's the setup for the graph. Now I'll drag on the components that make up the processing for the for the graph for the job. I use an XS, XLS data reader, a DB output table for the MySQL table, and a reformat which is sometimes called a transformation or a map and other ETL tools. Using the edge tool I'll then connect each of the components. They flow left to right, source to target, uh, with the reformat component in between. And then I'll apply to each of the ports. Ports are working off of the components. I apply a metadata. So for the XLS data reader, it's the spreadsheet. And for the DB output, it's the MySQL table. There's some properties that need to be set for the component. I've told it the metadata, now I'm going to tell it exactly which file to process. It happens to be the same one in the data in folder. So this is telling it specifically to work with contacts XLS. Uh, the first row is metadata, that contains the column headings. So mark that off here. Similar step for the MySQL table, selecting the connection that was created before. I have an opportunity to build a uh, SQL statement within this tool or I can use a query URL to point to a file or a database table itself. Um, the decision will be how complex the, the um, target mapping is going to be. I'll use the SQL query because I don't want to specify uh, all of the fields which would be the case if I select a DB table. I want to leave off contact ID because that's an auto increment field in my SQL. So I select the table and I'll select all of the fields from email on down and I'll generate a query. Now in the query text box you can edit it and there happens to be a problem with the country field so I'll manually edit that. Replace this auto generated value with country and it seems to work that, that way. Last step is to work in the middle, the transformation is where you map the fields from the input, which is the spreadsheet, to the output, which is the table. Now, but there's a slight variation in the schemas. For example, in the spreadsheet, there are fields prefix and suffix. Uh, the zip code is called zip. Uh, in the legacy contact table, there's a contact ID, no prefix, suffix. Uh, and zip is called postal code. So this is an opportunity to kind of normalize some of those uh, terms as well. Uh, first name, last name, I'll go down the list and map each one of those. Uh, email, everything will be mapped on the target side except for contact ID. OK, 
Okay, that looks good. Save it. I'll bring up a console. There's a few errors from a from a previous run, and I'll run it here. Okay, that looks like it ran, and I'll do a select statement here, and you can see that the target table is filled with 29 records. That's what the input is. And that's it.